Welcome back to the Crazy Small CPU video series. We've completed the hardware wiring of the breadboard, um, so now it's probably time to turn our attention to the software side. After all, there's no point building a CPU unless you've actually got uh, software to run on top of it and the tools to actually uh, do the compiling and assembling and that sort of thing. So I want to quickly just walk through the compiler of the assembler and a couple of the simulators that come um, with the system. So I'm just going to quickly clone the GitHub repository and have a look at what we've got. So if I just quickly go into that folder. Okay, so what you'll see is there's a bunch of uh, files with uppercase and they're generally instructions. Um, so we've got some examples, a folder of examples. Uh, instructions.md lists the available assembly language instructions. Uh, we've got some notes, which are my running notes as I was building it. We've got the schematic, uh, so if you do want to do a breadboard version, uh, print that out and use that as your guide. Um, the usage.md file tells you about the assembler and uh, the simulator, and that's what I want to go through in this video right now. So let's have a look at the assembler and how we use it to generate the machine code that will be put into the ROMs. Okay, so, uh, but to do that we need an example. So I'm just going to have a look at examples.printhex.s, which is a short program that pretty much prints out two hex digits to the UR. So let's actually have a look at that. Okay, so um, we've got, there's no labels um, on our assembly uh, line, so I'm not doing any jumping, uh, except for probably at the bottom. So that pretty much always you'll see in our example programs that there's an infinite loop at the end, and we need that so that when we run it in the simulator, uh, the simulator knows when to stop, and when we run it on the real hardware, the real hardware won't just start continuing on to rubbish instructions uh, in the ROM. Okay, so um, here are our instructions. So now we probably need to convert that into some sort of machine code. All right, so we've got the CAS assembler. So if I do CAS and examples print hex.s, then what will come out are some images for ROMs. We've got bot rom.image, and that's effectively the address ROM, uh, because back when I first did version one, it was at the bottom of this schematic, so that's why it's got called bot rom. And top rom.image. Now the image files are the ones you actually write to uh, ROM chips. Uh, there's a couple of other versions, botrom.rom and toprom.rom, which are going to be uh, loaded into the Logisim simulated version of the CPU. And I'll get onto that in just a little bit. Okay, so if I have a look at, for example, the address ROM, and I'll have a look at the one that's in hexadecimal, then you can see the list of addresses that will be used as part of every instruction. All right, now, of course, we've got the uh, assembled version of the program and we want to run it so the next thing we need is to use the csim which is the simulator all right so if i say dot csim all by itself it will take those rom images load them in and actually simulate them but i know it's not going to work because we need a third rom image which of course is the contents of our alu so to make that, we can say make alu.rom. And as always, you'll get an image file to write out to a real ROM chip and a .rom file, which we're going to be used, uh, we'll, which we'll use for the Logisim version. All right, so now we actually have uh, the machine code for the program and the uh, ALU ROM image. I can now say dot slash csim to run the simulator and it does the job of running the machine code. Okay, so that's a quick look at the tools, but I'll just go back a little bit further. If I run cas minus d, oops, print hex dot s, the minus d option actually will show you what will be loaded into uh, the ROMs. So A8 is the control lines and 0 to is going to be in the uh, address ROM. 78 goes into the control ROM as the control lines and OA goes into uh, the address ROM. 
So my uh, dot slash cas minus d uh, gives you out some more information. And if I run it with uh, two minus d's for more debugging information, it will also show you uh, the active control lines. So in the first instruction, we're doing uh, load a constant. So therefore, we've got the a load line. On the next uh, line, we're going to be doing pass A, pass A out through the ALU, which means we need to turn on the A cell line. And of course, we're going to be writing to memory. So therefore, the RAM write line goes on as well. OK, so um, the, that's the assembler. Um, and there's a whole bunch of example programs. Anything that starts with .s is an assembly language program that you can uh, assemble and then run in the simulator. So I've already shown you the simulator, but there's a couple of other options to the simulator. If you want to run the, uh, the simulator at a certain clock speed to simulate the real hardware a bit more accurately, then uh, we can say 100 hertz. Uh, minus C, 100 gives you 100 hertz. Now, obviously, for this program, it's not the best example. But if I compile up the one that does Fibonacci and the Minsky sine wave and run that again, you'll see now it's calculating Fibonacci numbers. And eventually, it will start producing, uh, here we go, off we go to draw, do the sine wave. That's going to be really slow. So let's actually run it at a faster clock rate. Let's make it 2,000. All right, and that's a much faster thing. You can appreciate what it's doing now. So if I actually had real hardware turned up to 2000 hertz clock signal, then that's what I would see. Um, the CSIM simulator also has some other things we can do. Uh, so mine is D for debugging. And I have to uh, run this through the pager. So what CSIM minus D shows you is the fact that we're on a particular program counter value and we've got a certain set of flags. Uh, when we look up that uh, ROM location in the uh, address and control ROMs, we've got address zero, control ROM value A8, which means we're going to be turning on the A load line. And after the instruction is completed, A is now zero. OK, so if we go down to another line like this one, program counter eight, the zero flag is on. Uh, we're doing something to address four. Uh, the control lines are seven A. And that basically means we're doing an ALU operation, passing the A value 8 out. A comes in as 1, uh, B0 carry in 1. The output obviously will be 1 on the data bus. And we must be asserting RAM right because RAM location 4 now has the number 1 in it. And because we did a ALU operation, we did start with the 0 flag turned on, but 1 was on the data bus, and so therefore the 0 flag is now off. OK, so uh, CAS is the assembler, CSIM is a the simulator. They both come with some extra options to control how they get used. So let's now look at the Logisim version of the CPU. So I'm going to actually load this circuit up. So this circuit is a sort of a gates and components version of this, the uh, uh, CPU. So if I do Logisim crazy CPU.CIRC, Right, so what you can see on the left is the actual components and the wiring between them. We've got the uh, control ROM, the address ROM, the ALU ROM. We've got the A and B registers connected to the multiplexer. The multiplexer is connected to the RAM, and of course the RAM is connected to the output of the um, ALU. And we've got our program counter uh, counting and sending information into the ROMs. And we've got the control lines coming out to go down to control all the other components. And over on the right, we've got the UART and the display of the UART. And you can see I've made it fairly wide because when we're running Fibminsky, then it'll use that. So before we do anything, we better load up the contents. So I've right clicked, load image. Um, let's go into, where am I? I've got to go up to my home folder, go into CSCV2. And I'm loading up, which one did I choose? ALU.ROM. OK, uh, BotROM, we're going to load that. Right click again, and we're going to use the ROM version, BotROM.ROM. 
and top rom and of course I'm going to load top rom dot rom so now we're going to run fibminsky so going up to the simulate window let's set the tick frequency up to what are we going to use uh, let's go for a kilohertz and control K will turn on the ticks or if you want to just single step you can use control T as well okay so let's turn on uh, control K I'll just move over so we can see the output a bit better right off we go we're running Fibinski we've done the Fibonacci series and now we're doing the uh, sine wave output okay so it's identical we're running exactly the same ROMs we're just uh, running the hex version of the ROM rather than the binary version of the ROM so there you go um, so those are the software tools that come with uh, the crazy small CPU um, in the next video I'll probably look at the compiler uh, and just give you a little bit of a rundown on how the compiler works as well